For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Well, hello again. Paul Dingaman here with a uh, really special uh, Focus program. We are uh, very honored to have the superintendent of the city of St. Clair, Warren Ruthie, uh, who's been in the, that job for about a year and a half now. He's joining us today to bring us up to date on fiscal stuff. Normally it's pretty dull stuff, but uh, this report I think you'll be very pleased with and very interested in, in following with Warren. Uh, and he's got some exciting stuff that's going on in the city. Warren, welcome back to the Focus Show. Thank you, Paul. Nice to see you. It's exciting to be back again. Your uh, your first anniversary is uh, the history already. Yes, sec uh, second one's coming up in October. Been a busy year already, uh, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, exciting things are just around the corner, which is good. But but you presented to City Council uh, a couple weeks ago uh, a report on the finances and and an overall fiscal report. I thought it was important information and we thought we better get you in here and, and uh, tell the public about it. So Absolutely. Go ahead. All right, well, thank you again. Thank you for having me here. It's been a great, almost two years at St. Clair. Um, what I wanna talk about today is uh, really where we're headed with Good. fiscal year 2022. Uh, we just adopted that budget in June. It's effective October 1. And uh, as we get started though, I'll also recap you know, major things that have happened in our community uh, on the city's end uh, in, fisc in 2020 and currently 2021 so far as well. Okay, well, let's get started. This is the fiscal year 2020 2022 overview. And let's see the first slide, guys. There we go. All right, so again, I'm gonna start off with a, kind of a recap of 2020 and 2021 so far. Uh, we have a, a lot of development happening in the city of St. Clair. Uh, first and foremost is the Magna International facility that's being constructed up on Range and Yankee. Really going up quick. Yes, My yeah, golly. I'm, you know, it's, you know, as a government, you try and get things done quickly. And I think for the most part, we're successful. But when you look at the speed that, that, that they're building that building, you know, it's just, it's really, you know, inspiring to see. And I can't wait to see it filled with jobs and, you know, you know it'll just help solidify St. Clair's, yeah. you know, yeah. position on the map, absolutely. Uh, we also have, besides Magnus, some new housing, a new housing development uh, across the street from Gearing Elementary. Um, and uh, that's construction on that development supposed to start in fall of uh, this year. I believe there should be about 50 new homes. 50? Yes, in that, uh, in that, uh, in that development, the construction, the homes that will be constructed first will be, have driveways fronting uh, Carney Drive, and then afterwards they'll you know continue on and fill in the space which where the current Woodland Estates is, and you know where Carney Drive is now. Is it all part of Woodland Estates, or are they separate? They're, I believe they're going to be calling it you know phases three through five. What's there now is phases one and two. So, okay. uh, um, but uh, not all the plans have been submitted yet, so you know can't speak for sure on what right. the what the final you know right. you know. Uh, name will be but uh, that's really exciting to see um, housing development too we don't have a lot of land left in the city for housing development so it's good to see see it where we you know where, where we can have it you know hope that brings a lot of families to the area um, one thing that's also not on this list at all is something I just uh, thought of is the redevelopment of uh, Eddie Elementary School oh yeah um, which is going to be a, ultimately a mixed-use facility the main component will be uh, senior housing not assisted living but you know if you're getting older and you want to downsize type of thing um, uh, so that that's in the works uh, the, set the county land bank authority purchased the property you know to maintain its tax exempt status and was, is able to hold on to it you know for the right developer and we were able to find that right developer and um, to do the reuse of uh, Eddie elementary and obviously gearing you know the property was all you know you know, sold as one piece, um, including gearing, but gearing's going to stay a school for the next few years as the school district finishes up with the, the bond work that they uh, passed last year. Um, as far as uh, infrastructure goes, we have a lot of projects last year. We reconstructed parts of Third Street, Cass Street. Uh, we did work on St. Clair Highway, Vine. We're also just starting this week, we're doing water main replacement and then street replacement on Golf Street as well. Um, so again, lots of trying to you know use that use the road millage dollars that we get that voters approved a few years ago um, to you know fix as many roads as we can, spread them out around town, do a mixture of cheaper resurfacings, more expensive reconstructions. Um, and then how, uh, how long ago did, was the road millage passed, and 
how long does it, uh, when does it expire? I believe it passed in 2016. However, the first taxes weren't collected until the, I think the 2018 fiscal year, which those, those, those would have been the taxes paid in fall of 2017. That's the best I got right now. So we're, we're about five, we're not quite halfway through the initial 10 year period. Oh, it was a 10 year. Um, it was a 10 year millage. So eventually without an extension of that millage, you know, our ability to, to fix these roads is, you know, pretty much 100% supported by that tax. And uh, from what I hear from feedback I get is people are very impressed with the work when it's done, mm -hmm. that they, they, the work is fine and uh, there's no complaints. Sometimes there's uh, bumps and, and uh, trouble getting through it because mm -hmm. uh, you, your roads tore up, but they're real happy when it's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's good to hear. You know, we're trying to, trying to fix as many roads as we can. We might not get to your street this year or next year, but, you know, we want to try and be proactive and, you know, really maximize the dollars, that, the limited dollars that, which we do have. A um, few other things just to kind of recap. We also are working on an exciting uh, project which should begin construction next year, which is the Clinton Avenue bike path. I think you did a program with uh, former council member McCartney and yep. Jim Beer a few months ago talking about that. Uh, we're getting well over $800,000 wow. in external funding for that project. Uh, it's roughly a million dollar project. We're expecting to spend about 100,000 of our own money. Obviously, it might be a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on you know the actual right. bids we receive and the work. It's, um, but that's, uh, that's really exciting. I really think it will be a good link and uh, help uh, people um, move about town more safely, connect you know, Neiman's, Greg Park, and you know, as the trail leaves our boundaries, you know, to our downtown area. So I think that's going to be a tremendous, you know, you yeah. know, asset for the community. I think a lot of people are looking forward yes, to that. Yes, absolutely. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see construction commence, and I'm hoping, hoping we can do that next spring. Um, we also, um, it's kind of a more boring topic, but uh, since I've been here, we have negotiated new collective bargaining agreements with Wonderful. our, uh, with our unions, the DPW union, AFSME, as well as the police union, POLC. Um, and in both of those, we saw significant savings in future long, what's called long-term legacy costs or mm -hmm. liabilities. So that's pensions, retiree health care benefits. In both the contracts, we were able to close the pension system for new hires. So wow. As well as retiree health care, we did some changes there, both stopping it for new hires and in, and in, some ca and in both cases increased the share of the insurance when somebody retires that there's a monthly premium, they'll be paying more of that premium than they were before. Again, we're trying to be good stewards of not just today's taxpayers, but you know tomorrow's taxpayers and taxpayers, you know, 20, 25 years ago. Because when you're talking about pensions and retiree health care, you know, somebody could collect a pension for decades now. Um, and we have to, we, you know, that's reality, we have to prepare for it. So the, the decisions we make now, we might not see a lot of savings today or tomorrow, but if you add them all up over the course of 20 years, um, it's, it can be very significant. Um, two other projects I want to talk about as well so far as we are probably in fall, we'll begin an upgrade of uh, our street lights in town. Oh, to wow. LED fixtures. We're going to be replacing nearly all the street lights. We're going to keep the decorative ones on Clinton um, just because we don't know exactly, you know, how the bike path project's going to turn out yet. But uh, with the LED fixture upgrade, you know, there was some initial one-time cost to purchase the fixtures. But uh, it's a much more you know, energy efficient technology and we're hoping to save about 37,000 annually in electric wow. bills. Uh, so, so we're gonna go from the yellow to the white in, yes. in this project? Yes, okay, it'll, be, it'll, it'll, it'll be white-ish, you know, definitely, yeah. definitely moving away from yellow, more towards you know, that clean you know, yeah. LED look. Um, it's really exciting. And then uh, last but not least, we have an uh, upcoming development. Actually today, in fact, they were filming this on Wednesday, is a, a planning commission meeting to go over the site plan for the Riverbank uh, Youth Theater, which is a new theater wow. facility, which the Vertons uh, of uh, Marine City, they have a few theaters down there. They're looking to construct uh, approximately 300 person uh, indoor theater in the southwest corner of the mall parking lot at 3rd and J Street. Um, I'm really excited for that project. I think it's just another thing that's gonna attract people to St. Clair. If this summer and even last summer to an extent St. Clair was the place everybody wanted to be you know we were still able to have events have them safely and uh, you know we're eager eager to see you know community prosperity you know in the downtown and, and you know throughout the town as well. Yeah the Verdes had great success uh, during the COVID time uh, in Palmer Park mm -hmm. uh, everybody was outside they were masked and they were mm -hmm. they put on a number of productions yes uh, 
uh, with youth and with adults and comedy and everything else using the county stage and I think they got interested in coming here on a more permanent basis mm -hmm. because of that experience. They were welcomed Absolutely. so well. So. No, I always think that St. Clair, whether it's you know myself, my coworkers, or anybody in the community, we always try and put our best foot forward. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why we're able to have success with the funding for the bike path, the Magnet Project, the Vertons, you know. Do you have one more, uh, Carney Drive, what's happening there? Oh, yes, so, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later on oh, too, okay. but uh, we are going to be I resurfacing all of uh, Carney Drive uh, next year as well, but more on that later. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. All right, I didn't, yeah, go ahead. All right, let's go to the next slide now. So again, one of the things I always, people always talk to me about is tax rates and I pay a lot of taxes, what, what do you do with them? They're too high, nobody's ever said they're too low. Um, but uh, just wanted to take a few moments so they just kind of talk about, here's reality, here's what it's like and what the taxes go through and um, you know, how it all works. So uh, the first thing I'll say is there actually is going to be a decrease in the millage rate. So in the, the city taxes, not the county and school district taxes, I don't have control over those, but uh, there's certain things in the Michigan Constitution, the Headley Amendment primarily, is created this mechanism where if property values grow in excess of a certain rate, I believe it's the rate of inflation, the millage rates, the maximum millage rate the city can levy or tax is automatically reduced. And our rates reduced very, very small, uh, very light reduction. So for example, the total city tax rate in 2020 was 16. 0.5378 mills. We're decreasing that to uh, 16.3922 mills for fiscal year 2020. Um, it so actually should be 2022, right. um, although you pay them in 2021, you know, in the beginning <laughs> right. of the fiscal year. It, it, it's confusing the staff right. too sometimes. <laughs> um, and yeah. so. The again, bottom line is it's going to be less. It, the bottom line is it's going to be less. Not a lot less, but it is still, it's not an increase, and it's, right. it, it's still, you know, lo lower than, you know, it's a negative <laughs> uh, direction. So, um, uh, total tax revenue, this is estimated to bring in uh, roughly $3,595,000 3, um, you know, and some change, um, so roughly $3.6 million. Um, this is a below, I mean, this is, this is still above our 2000, hang on a second. So this $3.6 million is below our 2007 high tax collections of $4 million. Uh, but it's above our 2014 low of $3 million. So there's big fluctuation in the last few years in the taxes as we recovered from the Great Recession. We'll get to that you know, on my next slide. And then just real quick, just to show the lion's share of that 16.39 mills goes to general operating. So that's things like uh, um, you know, assessing, elections, public works, public safety. And then we have two other taxes that, again, this, the road millage, which we talked about, that's 2.46 mills. And then the pension, we have a millage to help cover pension costs. And that's, it used to be one mill, but it was just reduced to 0 0.9912. So again, that's all, all in, it's you know, $3.6 million. Okay. All right. So uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is a, this chart um, tells a really important story. So when you look at your tax bill, oh, and this kind of shows all the tax bills in the city aggregated, um, you have two, two values. The blue line is the assessed value. The orange line is the taxable value. Now the taxable value is what the taxes are calculated on. So the taxes you pay calculated and the taxes I receive are that orange line. So if you look back in 2003, the taxable value was a, you know, roughly $200 million. And uh, that increased to 2007, and it was $246 million. And again, in my, previously I said our high year of revenue collection was 2007, when the taxable value was at its highest. Well, then the Great Recession happened, property values, assessed values, everything, you know, you know went down dramatically. Uh, and then there was also some personal property changes thrown in the mix, too, in the middle of the recovery. So today we're only at $218 million for taxable value. So that's the tax base of the city. It's still less than, you know, we're, we're 10 years out, you know, we're over 10 years out from the, uh, the beginning of the Great Recession and we still haven't fully recovered where we were. You know, I know it might feel like people are paying even more in taxes than they ever have before, but you know, I would say if you've owned your home since before 2007, there's a very good chance your taxes in 2007, 2006 
are higher than what you are paying now. Again, that might not, that's not the case for everybody, but it's definitely a, an interesting exercise, I think. So the blue line where it says in 2021, I'm at uh, 200, 2 million, that's 2 million, two, uh, 267 million. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that number used for? So that's the assessed value. And again, and this is uh, in, in the early 90s or mid 90s, Proposal A was voted on and it was a way of redoing how schools were funded in the state of Michigan and how property taxes work. And it essentially created two values, assessed value and taxable value. And so the assessed value is, you know, in its truest, you know, it is ideally the half of the true cash value of property. So if you have a $200,000 okay. home, you, this assessed value of it or the blue line should be half, you know, half of that state equalized value, hundred thousand dollars. Now that can change as the assessor, you know, does their annual assessments might go up, might go down. Um, but what there also was created was that taxable value, and that's the one that even if the assessor says the assessed value on your house went from two hundred thousand dollars to two hundred and ten thousand dollars, the taxable value can't doesn't increase by that okay. amount. It's limited to grow at inflation or 5%, whichever is less. And in the last decade, we've had very low inflation. So that's why you see the blue line is going up much quicker than the orange line because there's that law that limits, you know, it really limits our ability to recover. You know, it is good because it, it keeps the increase, the annual increases in property tax bills manageable. But when you have a decrease, you can't recover as quickly um, as you may want to. Okay. All right, move on. Yes, next slide. <laughs> Oh, so, that's a good, yeah. So again, real, real quick, um, city millage rate history. Just wanted to show this, and I know the, the bars kind of look like there's some big swings in them, but if you look at the actual numbers, you know, the highest millage rate the city ever had was, you know, going back to 1998 was 17.1 mils. And today we're at 16.39. So, you know, that's a difference of less than one mil. Yeah. So the tax rate has been, again, very stable over the last you know 22 years um, we haven't seen large increases or decreases again i think this demonstrates that uh you know we always try and live within our means without having to go out and say we need more we need a tax increase you know right. it's you know it's a it's a balancing act okay. um uh, but again it has been stable so uh we can go to the next slide now and again r real quick i always like to say this when you pay your city tax bill um, not all the money is kept by the city. There are other taxes on it that go to, to the school, the state of Michigan, the county, and it all can be divided up into three sections. Education, whether it's a state education tax or the local school district tax, like the one that was just passed in 2020. Then there's a bunch of county agencies, you know, SC4, the county itself, special military. Drug task force. Drug task force, yes. So 43 cents of every dollar. If you're a homeowner who's got the homestead, you know, it's a homestead property. It's not like your second home or anything. 43 cents of every dollar you pay towards the city of St. Clair is actually kept by the city. The rest we send on to the county, the school district, and the state for those various things. Um, okay. So again, just important to know that we do not keep all the money that uh, is paid to us. Okay. We have to send them on. All right, I'll take the next slide now. All right, I have two charts here, and uh, just, just a quick uh, um, clarification. These, uh, the general fund revenues and expenditures I'm about to read are going to be different slightly than what is, uh, was in the paper. Um, the auditors uh, consider the recreation fund part of the general fund. From mm. a budget adoption standpoint, we split them out. But just for the sake of making these graphs in time for today's presentation, the numbers are going to be slightly higher okay. than what was in the paper. Just wanted to throw that out there. But um, our general fund is our most important fund. Most of our th services that people think of, police, fire, you know, again, elections, public works, parks, that's all the general fund. Um, the, it's $4.2 million in revenues. 69.5% um, of that is taxes. Again, that's two point nine. Nine million. Um, the next biggest chunk is uh, revenue sharing payments from the state. That's at 15.3% uh, of our revenues. So just those two sources there, you know, they pretty much cover, you know, 85%. Pretty close. Yeah, yeah. about 85% of our general fund revenue comes from those two places. Uh, so again, it, it just you know puts it in perspective just how much we rely on those taxes mm -hmm. and the revenue sharing payments from the state. Uh, and then now next slide. So here is our general fund expenditures. You can see with these categories, um, t the three largest ones are obviously public safety, that's police and fire, um, and you know, about one and a half million dollars, a little bit less than that. 
general government, again, that's basically everything else, um, like elections, public works, parks. Um, uh, actually, public works is separate there, but uh, that's about a million dollars. And then uh, in important to see, uh, we have a pension contribution in our general fund to help. Uh, the pension millage doesn't raise enough money to cover our annual pension costs. Far from it. That millage only generates about 200 grand a year. We need another 500,000 wow. just from the general fund to cover and you know make sure we have enough money to make those pension payments to our uh, retirees. So again, it's uh, again we are there is a surplus this year planned. Um, you can see you know 4.2 million in spending, uh, four point, I mean 4.2 million in revenues, 4.1 million in spending. You know we have a little cushion in there. You know should things arise, obviously we don't know what the cost of that bike path are going to be right. you know, fully yet. But uh, yeah, that's kind of just an overview of the city's most important fund, and. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm ready to go to the next slide. There we go. All right, so again, infrastructure projects. I, I'm an infrastructure guy. I think bread and butter, you got public safety, you know, fire, police protection, and then public health which, and safety, wh you know, which is roads that are safe to drive on in good shape, water systems that deliver clean drinking water, sewer systems that work effectively and we don't have, you know, sewage explosions happening right, all around right. town. So those are the bread and butter. I'm a bread and butter kind of guy. Um, so we've got a lot of projects coming up for the next fiscal year. Like we mentioned earlier, we have the, all of Kearney Drive will be resurfaced. We got a grant from the state of Michigan to cover a majority of those costs. That's our, made, that's our designated truck route in town, so with all the traffic coming in from the Magna plants, with both the trucks and the employees, we were able to we were able to submit an application and successfully be awarded the grant from the state of Michigan. So all of Kearney Drive is going to be replaced from Fredmore Highway to Range Road. Wow. Um, all, the actually, yeah, all the Yeah, all the intersections will be upgraded, so those terrible intersections on Kearney Drive, those will all be cleaned up as well, repaved, resurfaced. Um, we also have more work, uh, Fredmore Highway. We have some, f also we have some federal money. Every few years we get a project. The county has a task force that gets money and shares it with all the, the communities in the area. So we have a project mostly funded by Fredmore Highway, on Fredmore Highway with those federal funds. That's gonna be from Kearney Drive to just a little bit past Henry Street. We also will be doing resurfacings on the north end of town. Again, this year we spent, uh, we resurfaced St. Clair Highway. We rebuilt Golf Street, you know, south of the bridge, focused on that area. Now we're heading back north. We're going to do Meldrum Circle, Devon, Benedict, and Stratford. Um, so that you know, those roads are like many roads in this town. You know, need some TLC. So yeah. we're, you know, we're excited to you know bring some. Been a uh, while. Yeah, bring some TLC that way. Uh, and you know, lastly on the water and sewer side, we got a few projects planned. Uh, we're going to be getting a new meter reading truck. Just standard equipment you know where the meter reading truck is old it breaks down frequently we want to make it more reliable um we have to do a study every five years from eagle which is kind of like a doctor's physical on the water system basically everything from the water tower to the tap in your home uh we'll be doing that project uh, and that, that kind of acts as a road map for future projects that are needed throughout our system um and we're still working on the nine million dollars of proposed improvements to the drinking water plant itself we were unable to get uh, funding through the state's low interest loan program this year. They uh, had 250 million in funding available and they had over 700 million wow. in requests. Oh. So it's everybody- Did ev not every compute. Yeah, everybody, everybody's looking for infrastructure money. So uh, again, still working on that. There's a few other sources, you know, low interest loan programs that, you know, we could, you know, we're actively looking into, you know, what those require, um, things like that. Uh, we've also had some money set aside for investments at our wastewater treatment plant as well as uh, purchasing sewer camera equipment. I, you know, our goal is to essentially go through and clean our sewers. We have the equipment to do that, but then also run a camera through them and after, once they're all clean, see, okay, where are the defects? What, are, what, are we, what spots do we need to be aware, be aware of so we can start building you know, a long-term maintenance plan and try and fix things as we discover them versus you know, when they go bump in the night. Yep. So uh, that's kind of where we're at with infrastructure and uh, the last slide I have right now is just a really important one. Um, it's a, a map of all the road improvements that have been done since 2016. Um, and again, so the road millage of uh, money started coming in in calendar year 2017. And you'll just see, you know, we've tried to spread, uh, you know, sp spread the work around, around, you know, around the city limits. Uh, it's a various, it's a combination of a uh, resurfacing projects, reconstruction projects. Um, we've also been done crack sealing in some of the last few years to try and maintain those other roads that aren't quite as bad. But uh, I just think, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah. So people want to know where did my road tax dollars go? This is where they went. That's okay. been able to do all of this. 
you know, in the last six years, and you know, we, we got a few more years left on the road millage. I'd be, I'm excited to see what this map is going to look like you know, at the conclusion so of the, the road the re, uh, the rebuilding, I understand those, that, and you put new sewers in and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, a rebuilt road lasts how long? A resurfaced road lasts how long? Round figures. Sure, so the, uh, you know, a rebuilt road Total completely, rebuilt. you know, well over 20, 25, okay. 30 okay. years. Resurfacing normally can add, you know, 15, 20 years to the lifespan of the road. It really all depends on you know, we try some, some roads that we resurface are a little bit worse than others. So, right. you know, and it all depends on, like Harney Drive, for instance, is one of the most heavily traffic streets. Resurfacing that, you know, it'll last, you know, again, you know, if we get 15 years out of it, you know, that, that's great. But if we resurface, you know, Meldrum Circle, we'd hope to get more, because again, the traffic volume is just simply far, far less than it would be yeah. on, on Kearney. Okay, uh, we're hearing a lot of conversation out of Washington, good, bad, and indifferent about uh, infrastructure. And also there's been money already uh, allocated from uh, American Recovery Plan. Did I get the yes. right title? Yes. Uh, what are the city's involvement in those projects? So the American Recovery Plan funds, um, or Biden bucks, as I okay. like to call them, um, those are, the city's going to be receiving two payments. Uh, I think each of them is going to be about $270,000. Wow, wonderful. Um, we should get the first payments. We submitted our application last week in another two or three weeks, we should have those funds. Um, ultimately, what those funds, there's a lot of restrictions on what those funds can and can't be used on. One of the areas where we can use them is improvements to our water and sewer systems. Um, ultimately, there's going to be a, you know, a city council decision, a city council discussion um, on what the highest and best use of those funds oh, would okay, be. Oh, okay, good. So yep. you're going to... You're going to talk about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's not every day. You, it's not every day we get you know money like this. So we want to make sure we spend it, you know, and get the best possible return. And again, that ultimately it's going to be a city council decision on how to appropriate and spend those funds. Good, wonderful. Oh, good. Well, it's a wonderful report, and uh, it was critical information, important information for the taxpayers of the city of Saint Clair to to see, and to also for people who live in the townships surrounding to find out what the exciting things are going to be happening in the next uh, next weeks next few few yeah, years so absolutely and do we miss anything no i think that's a pretty you know pretty thorough deep dive maybe too deep in some areas just on you know the inner workings of the city from a financial standpoint a planning standpoint um so again i'm really excited that you know you had me on and i've been enjoying my time here in st Clair, and uh well, we're enjoying look, you you being here and i look so, you know uh, i look forward to continuing on um uh, with, you know, more success and uh, su completed projects. His name is uh, Warren Rothy, and he is the uh, new superintendent, new year and a half, uh, superintendent of the city of St. Clair. And uh, we really thank him for this uh, the total look at the, at the finances of the city of St. Clair, and, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Till next time, I'm Paul Dingaman. See you soon. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.